Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time again for another Verbling class. Um, I am in Washington State in the United States and for me it's 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, in this hour we're going to be doing a writing class so if you are not familiar yet with how I do uh, the writing classes then you can stick around and listen to understand how this works. If you have a reservation with your Verbling Premium membership, you can join now. Just uh, click on the little button that says the Get Reservation, and you can come into the class now. Hi, Andre. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good. Hey, I saw the video that you guys made of for Hannah's birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I saw you in it. That was awesome. <laughs> yes, the, I think that she enjoyed a lot. Oh yeah, I'm sure that was awesome. Yes. <laughs> cool. Well, how long did it take to for you guys to put that together? Ah, uh, we sent a video by by email. Mm, okay. For like... Nor Norbert, and he, oh. he joined the our our videos. Uh huh. He put them all together. How yes. did you, how did you know it was her birthday? Had you talked uh, about it or something in class or? Uh, yes, I think. Oh, uh, okay. And yeah. the Norbert uh, enjoyed the opportunity. Uh huh. Does he show? Do... They show her. Uh huh. Does he know how to do that stuff pretty well? The video editing stuff, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was neat. Cool. Everybody liked it. All the teachers watched it and stuff. Well, I don't know if everybody watched it, but a lot of people saw and, it. So. And now uh, we are famous now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> on Facebook and on YouTube. <laughs> and, uh, YouTube too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yep. Hi there, Tural. How are you? Make sure you uh, check on your microphone. It's probably muted. So um, when you're coming into class, everybody, uh, a lot of times when you come into the Google Hangout, your microphone is automatically muted. That means it's red. If you look up at the top of the right-hand uh, corner, you'll see the microphone and it's red. That means I cannot hear you. So um, before you speak, just make sure that's not red. It has to be gray, and then I'll be able to hear you. Okay? So whoever wants to come in can come in now. All you have to do is click the join class button. I think we might be full actually. So for the people who are in the Google Hangouts, go to your Google chat and I'm posting the link for the document there. Um, all you have to do is uh, click on the left hand, upper left corner of your screen. It says chat. That's the Google chat. So it looks like some people have found it and are opening. I want to make sure everybody um, goes there and just I want to say hi to everybody. Andre, we were already talking a little bit, so haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> so um, I know I do I do classes at very uh, different times, so sometimes it works for some people and sometimes they don't really work for for other people. I have to fit it into my schedule of my life where I have lots of other things that I'm doing as well. So I just pick pick and choose different times. Okay, uh, John, how are you doing? Check your microphone. Hi. 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 <laughs> how are you? Good. And you're calling in from Turkey, right? Nope. I'm from. Uh, I'm John. Yeah, John. <laughs> which John. one? <laughs> oh, which one? Oh, yeah. The one, the one that looks like can, actually. <laughs> John. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah, um, I just remembered you told me that the C is more like a J, right, John? In Turkey? Um, yes, yes, I'm from Turkey. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. And you? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, Francesca, how are you doing? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. And you? Good. Where Where are you from? I'm from Italy. Italy. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> How's Italy today? Very bad. We've got a rainy day. It's rainy day today. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Too bad. <laughs> uh, okay, John, Freddy. Hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> and uh, where are you from? 
Uh, I am in Bogota, in Colombia. Oh, oh okay. All right. You yep. have your, your neighbors in here too, Maria Jose. Yep. Have you <laughs> met her? <laughs> Julissa, how are you doing today? Hello, Lisa. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good. And how's, how's the weather in uh, Peru? Well, these days it's getting colder. It's oh. uh, fall. It's starting, so soon it will be colder winter. Oh. Uh, now, now it's fine. Not so cold. It's yeah. It's still warm a little here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Maria, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Were you in the Spanish class? Yes. Were <laughs> I you heard, watching? I heard you. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I just kind of had it turned on in the background while I was doing some other things on the computer. But I, I heard your voice. <laughs> la camisita, la camisita de Lisa es uh, azul. Uh, azul. Sí, es verdad. <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> oh, okay, wonderful. And Marie Jose, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. And how are you? I'm doing well. Okay. Today is hot, like always here, but. But you're. Uh, uh, a funny day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm from well. Go ahead. Uh, and I'm from Colombia. Um, hello, everybody. Okay. Hello. And uh, Hi. Tomas. Hi. Hi, Tomas. Your your microphone is probably muted. If you want to check on it. For sure, it's it's on. There hello? you go. Yes, can I can me? hear you now. Good. Okay, so. So my name is Thomas. I'm from Poland. Thomas. All right. Wonderful. And uh, Vicent. Vicent. Hi. Yeah. How do you say your name? Is it Vicent? Vicente or? I think your microphone, it might be muted. So turn on your microphone. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Just yeah. to say it out. Yes. How do you say your name? Vicent. Vicent. And where are you from? Yes, I'm from Spain, Alicante in the south. Uh, Alicante, okay. And how's the yeah. weather there today? Yes, it's too windy today. Too yes, windy. It's, hot, it's, it's hot but too windy. Mm -hmm. Are you guys getting ready for Easter tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and probably some people here celebrate Easter and some do not. So let's see. Maria, do you do anything for Easter? Uh, well, yes, yeah, a lot of, yeah, many people make large dinners, like, mm -hmm. on Easter, Easter day, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Easter day, Saturday, yeah, Sounds yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> yeah, tomorrow, well, yeah, <laughs> Marie Jose, do you guys do anything for Easter? Yep, we go to the church, and... Uh -huh. And maybe a, a special a special lunch lunch with the family, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no more. Yeah, Francesca, do you do anything for Easter? Mm, yes, in Italy, in general, we celebrate Easter, but here in my family, we are not doing nothing special tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> just a simple lunch all together. Yeah. Okay. Andre, how about you? Yes, uh, here in Brazil we celebrate Easter, and uh, yesterday some people doesn't eat meat. Oh yes, uh huh. To Friday. to respect the day. Yes. And the uh, my family and I ate outside. Oh, did you eat fish? Yes. <laughs> yeah, good. It's a seafood dish. Uh huh. Does anybody else want to tell us if you're going to do anything for Easter? Julissa or John or John, Freddy? I know, Julissa, do you do anything? Well, here we have a long weekend that started just no, on th Thursday. Mm -hmm. From Thursday to Sunday. Yeah, it's a long weekend. Some people travel. But, well, this time I, I just stay at home. And, and same as Andre, we, don't, we can eat meat, just mm -hmm. fish. Yep. And, well, spice it in the church and what else. May, uh, eating. <laughs> Yesterday I was preparing uh, a new dessert with my mother. Like oh, cool. yeah. yeah, the main the main thing that happens, um, well, in America, in the United States, it's obviously the very different for 
everybody, depending on your religion, if you're Catholic or a Christian. Um, if you celebrate Easter, maybe you're going to go to church. Maybe you'll have a, a big, like, brunch, so halfway between a breakfast and a lunch, or maybe a lunch. And But the most fun is for the kids is the Easter egg hunt. So that's something that most of the kids like to do is maybe color eggs, and then the adults hide them, and then the kids go around looking for the Easter eggs. So that's pretty fun. Okay, well, you guys ready to do some writing? Looks like you guys all got to the page. Yeah. So let's... Uh, for you, those of you who want to get started because you already know what you're doing, then you can go ahead and start writing. And otherwise, I will go over the directions here so that everybody understands. Um, so this is the English writing class. And something about the microphones. Let's make sure that we um, either turn off your microphone when you're not uh, talking because I do hear some background noise right now. I'm not sure. Vicente. Okay, Vicente, I just muted your microphone just because I heard some uh, sounds in the background. So it's nicer if we can keep it more quiet just because um, people will be talking uh, soon. And you can always check that by looking up at the top of your Verbling chat uh, box or looking at your picture in the video below the big video and it shows a little red microphone. So mainly how this works is you first of all read the questions in the prompts then you write an answer and I'm challenging people to write at least five sentences for each answer if you can and um, you can of course write more if you want to it's all up to you um, I didn't really put a level I think I put intermediate on this so that's usually the people who show up have intermediate not super beginner level English but you can challenge yourself by writing as much as you'd like also, a good thing to do is to proofread your answers. That means to edit, to go back and read what you wrote first before you tell me and make some corrections first. And you want to be looking for capitalization, your commas, periods, and your verbs. Um, if you wanted them in the present tense or the past tense or some other tense. Um, and then when you're done writing your answer, you just tell me and then I'll have you read what you wrote out loud and then I will help make uh, corrections and answer any of your questions if you're not sure about the corrections that I made or you have a question and then you just go to the next one now the variation number eight here is if you don't like what I came up with to help you uh, start writing then you can go to the bottom and you can go all the way down and this is the free write section so uh, sometimes some people already know what they're interested in writing and they just want to see if they can do it and they want to just uh, have me check it so if that's you then go ahead it looks like Maria has some ideas about what she wants to to write about otherwise I have these for you today um, this picture of this tractor had a little accident there so you can make up a story and tell what happened. You can get creative if you'd like. If you're not very in a very creative mood right now, you can just simply describe the picture. You can describe what the scene is and what it looks like, what you see. Same thing for the next one here. This lady looks like she's giving some kind of a speech or a talk. And you can make up the story about who is this person and what is she doing what maybe what is she talking about why is she doing that just make it up it doesn't have to be real and another little picture here about looks like these two girls maybe they're from Sweden I don't know um, but they're look like they're in some country that's not their own maybe India or something like that and uh, they look like they're traveling so you can make up a story about them what they're doing Number four is just a question. If you had an extra $10,000, what would you do with it? So you can write about that and tell me all those wonderful things you would do with that kind of money. Um, here's a picture of a fancy oh. restaurant. And so in number five, you're writing an email. It says to email your mom to tell her that you'd like to take her out to dinner for her for her birthday, it should say, and that you will be uh, taking her out to a fancy restaurant. Tell her what type of restaurant it is and what kind of food she can get there. 
And then if you're interested in doing an essay, we have this statement. People should sometimes do things that they do not enjoy doing. So you have to agree with that statement or disagree. And then you have to have specific reasons to support your uh, agreement or disagreement. And so you write five paragraphs, and you have an introduction, the three paragraphs explaining your reasons, and then a conclusion. And that's pretty much it. We use our time. We have the whole hour to write. And pretty much you just try to do as much as you can. And also I will try to do as much correcting as I can. Sometimes um, towards the end, when everybody has finished writing, um, we, it, it gets a little bit tight, a little close to the end. So sometimes I don't um, get to read everybody's. Um, so we'll just do the best, best we can. Um, the first picture has a tractor in it, uh, Julissa. That's called a tractor. And it's some looks like it's Thanks. some kind of farm tractor. Maybe it was uh, fertilizing the grass, or I'm not sure what that thing is on the back. Looks like it's roll. It's a roller on the back of the of the tractor. So you can you can just choose any of those things that you'd like. Um, if you have any questions, you can just turn on your microphone and ask me. Uh, it's better if you ask me uh, than putting it in the chat just because sometimes I'm not always looking at the chat. Um, but yeah, if you don't know how to say something or you're not sure um, how to spell it or you just have a question, just go ahead and ask me. Okay, let's see. Does everybody know how to do it? So, let's see. Right here you can see Maria. Maria Jose, she just started. so. She put her name first, so that's what you do. You just this is an editable document, so which means you can just go wherever you want, click on it, and then start writing. So if you wanted to start with number two, you could just go right here, click, you write your name. Like I would write Lisa, and that I would say, This lady is da 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 or something like that. And I would just make up a story and tell the story. And then when I'm done. Then I'm gonna be. Uh, I'll be able to find it. And when you are done, I'll be able to find what you wrote because your name is there. So I'll go looking for it, and then I'll have you read it. And as you're reading it, I will be reading along also, looking at the words, and then I'll be able to help you um, make corrections. And then that way, you get immediate feedback. You don't have to think about whether or not you did it right or wrong. So. Um, you'll know. Okay? Again, if you don't want to write about those pictures, you can write something else. If you want, like you can see here, Maria's uh, writing something else. You could write a story if you want to. You could write a letter to somebody. You could tell me something about yourself. Um, the writing class is really just a time for you to use to write and to improve your English writing skills. So it really doesn't matter too much what you write about. It's up to you to decide what kinds of things are interesting to you. Does anybody have any questions? Looks like Andre, you're already writing. Uh, John, are you writing? Do you need any help or have any questions? No? Francesca, looks like you're started to write. And yes. jo John, I think I saw you're writing, starting to write maybe. And Julissa, Maria, and Maria Jose. Okay, looks like we lost some people. So if you are watching this, there is a couple of places open. If you want to come in and get uh, on the document and start doing some writing, this is a good chance for you to uh, have me give you some feedback and help you. If you want, if you're working on something easier, simple, simple sentences, you can come in and do that as well. Hi, Ayat. Probably your microphone is muted if you're just coming in. Hi, hi, teacher. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? Good, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put the uh, link again in the Google chat, so if you go to the Google chat, you can... Um... Yes, please. Okay. 
Let me know if you need any help. Did you understand the directions? Uh, no. Could you explain to me, please? Yes. Did you open the document? Well, minutes. I don't... Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay, I so... Open. Yeah, click on that and then... What you'll see is um, what I have here in the screen share in my video. You see that? So basically what we have here, Ayat, is um, a bunch of uh, pictures to start. We have this number one is says, tell the story. What happened? So here's this tractor. looks like it fell in some kind of a river or a canal or irrigation canal or something like that. And so you can just make up a story or you can describe it. Lisa? Say, yes? I have a question. What is the phrasal verb that... Uh, I need to use when I say that the tractor fell fell over. I can say that. Uh, yeah, it fell more like it fell into. Oh, okay, fell into the, the canal into the or the river or something like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hola, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, as you can see, uh, Maria Jose, she's working on the first question, which is the story. So she's just writing, and when she's done. She's going to read this out loud to me, and then I will make any corrections. Um, other people are starting in different places, like Francesca's doing number two, and um, somebody's working on number three, John is. Andre's working on four. So, uh, yeah, you can just choose which one you want to write and just start writing. Just put your name. So you just click to write. You just click on the page anywhere where you want to write and then you just for example uh, write your name so I would write my name Lisa and then I start writing does that make sense oops I was talking and she is out <laughs> Lisa I, yes. I'm, I'm down with the first picture okay number one go ahead Lisa <clears throat> okay in this picture, I can see a tractor that is falling down to the river. I guess the driver of the tractor was working on the field, taking out all of the wheat, when suddenly he made a grown move, and that made the tractor get into the water. Okay. I In this picture, I can see a tractor that I would say has fallen, since it already happened, mm -hmm. uh, has fallen in into the river. I guess the driver of the tractor was working on the field, uh, comma, taking out all of the weeds, comma, when suddenly he made a wrong move and that, I would say, caused the tractor to fall, in, oops, fall into the water. Okay. Good. Thanks. Uh-huh. So it looks like we have quite a few people watching the class. It's okay to join whenever you can. This class is a pretty um, uh, free-flowing class because everybody is actually working right now. Um, sometimes in the other classes you take turns speaking or you take turns reading, but what's kind of cool about this class is everybody can actually work the whole time and be doing something. So it's a very active class. You can spend time um, writing and, and then reading and then I'll be doing some correcting. So if you're watching the class and you get inspired, you have a few minutes, some time, you want to come in, you can come in and do some writing and um, then I will help make the corrections. The, what's nice about the verbaling classes is uh, they're free and a lot of times it's okay if you want to come in later it's nice if you show up on the hour and you can come in and take advantage of the whole class if you if you have time but you know we also know that some people 
don't have a whole hour and sometimes some people want to just come in for a little while to do specific things and this is a good class to be able to do that because you're not really interrupting anybody sometimes the other classes um, it can be a little bit more difficult to enter in later uh, because other people have already started a conversation or something like that but this is a good class uh, where you can come in at any time so if you see that join class button and you want to do some writing go ahead and come on in and if you are done writing anybody if you're done you can tell me and just like I did with um, Julissa I'll have you read and then I'll make some corrections Francesca do you want to read your first one that you finished the number two do you have to read right now you don't have to. No, it's oh. just that that it gets um it gets a little bit tighter towards if we wait till the end because okay. then everybody has a lot of stuff done. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, I can read it. Okay, great. Okay, this is the second uh, image, yeah, uh, the second picture, and this is a public event. The person who is speaking is the principal of the Columbia University, which is receiving all the international and foreign students, which are just arrived at the university for their overseas experience. She is greeting them and giving first important information in order to help them to feel comfortable. Okay, great. All right, this is a public event. The person who is speaking is the principal. So actually, um, when it's when it's a elementary school or a high school, we say mm -hmm. principal. But if it's um, the university, it's usually the president. Okay. Said, yeah, the president of uh, Columbia University. Um, mm -hmm. Who? Let's see. The person who is speaking is the president of Columbia University, who is receiving all the international and foreign students. Uh, I would say who have who have just arrived at the university for their overseas experience and actually we don't need to have uh, either of these capitalized um, she is greeting them and giving um, I would just say giving them some important information mm -hmm. in order to help them feel comfortable okay that's exciting. I want to know more. <laughs> what, what happens next? <laughs> okay, great. The first one. Okay, Maria Jose. Yep. Okay. <laughs> on Friday night, Juan and his friends were parting her until dawn. <laughs> dawn. Before they went home, they decided to race across the field in the Juan's farm. So each one picked a different tractor, and they were ready to start the race. <laughs> As they drove the tractors, Juan took a danger curve and his tractor fell into the canal. <laughs> this fact caused a big noise, so all people around the farm woke up and called in the police Thus, they believed that some thief had entered in the Juan's farm. Moreover, <laughs> when Juan fell into the river, he took a big trail full of, ro full of rocks with him. It almost killed him. He was a lucky guy. <laughs> Okay, I would not have thought of that. <laughs> That's great. Are you sure you don't want to be a creative writer, Mario Jose? Write some funny Why? stories. <laughs> well, you can do that if you go when you get your job and you're out there on your uh, platform in the middle of the ocean. You can uh, write stories in your free time. Yeah, yeah, I think that. I think so. <laughs> okay, let's see. On Friday night, Juan and his friends were partying hard until dawn. Before they went home, they decided to race across the field. Um, let's see, I would say of uh, the field, let's just say on uh, or at, at Juan's farm. So each one picked a different tractor and they were ready to start the race. As they drove the tractors, Juan took a dangerous curve and his tractor fell into the canal. This fact, or I would say this event actually, caused okay. a big noise and I would say and all the people around the farm woke up and called the police and I would say because they believed that some thieves had entered um, Juan's farm. Moreover, when Juan fell into the river he took a big uh, trail full right there, oh like that, um, that's actually a, like a big uh, pail we would say. Pail okay. full of rocks with him. It almost killed him. He was a lucky guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's funny. 
tractor racing on the farm. <laughs> Actually, I yeah. watched a, a movie yesterday about it. Really? Some, some, yeah, some guys live in, in the farm and yeah. And they, for fun, they they do they did like a, a tractor racing and some yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, that'd be kind of fun. What was the movie? Uh, I don't know the name. It was like a independence independence movie. It was a French movie, I think. Hmm. But I don't remember the name because the name was in in French. So I think that I I didn't understand the the name. I think that I have to look for in the Spanish. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds kind of funny. What did you just watch it on the internet or something? Nope. In in how do you say that in HBO? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, these days for Easter holidays, the how do you say the TV TV uh, mm -hmm. company? Yeah. Uh, give us the premium oh. package of the channel so yeah, yeah. So for free we are taking yeah we uh. are taking advantage advantage for mm -hmm. this. oh so you can get to see some new programming or something yeah yeah mm -hmm. cool i think i'm done <laughs> okay let's hear my it. easter this easter. is your, your easter story okay yes let me move it up a little bit <laughs> okay okay go ahead do you want to read okay yes. uh, set the table for easter when setting the table for a party, the most important thing is to surprise. That is the opinion of the table setting artist, Katharina Lindeweil. A table setting need no, not to be fancy with silver and gold. I work a lot with contrasts and unexpected elements. It gives the guests something to converse about or talk about, I'm not sure. <laughs> it yeah. works as an icebreaker. Uh, Katarina uses uh, attributes from the nature, such as blueberry, uh, uh, not the blueberries, but the um, uh, twigs, I don't know what it's called. Branches blueberry. or something like Branches. that? Branches, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, stones, twigs, feathers and vegetables. Odd objects make the table setting a more, Im give. Yeah. Give the table setting a more informal impression. A large effect is also important, according to Katarina. Some people often forget, something that people often forget is that the party starts before people come to the table. Do not put two torches at the entrance, put 40 torches. <laughs> it is simple yet awesome and creates a wow feeling or yeah. I don't know, you have some word for that in English. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a common mistake is to put high attributes on the table such as large bouquet of flowers or a huge candlestick or candelabra. Mm -hmm. okay, I don't know. Uh, those things cut context between guests. People have to be able to see and talk to each other. Yellow is a trend this spring, which suits perfectly fine in Easter. <laughs> Yellow is a trend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That people make that stuff up. Okay. Set the table for Easter. All right. When setting the table for a party, comma, the most important thing is to surprise. Um, Uh-oh. What happened? Oops. Yeah, what happened? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <Just moved up. laughs> that was weird. I haven't made an, a copy this time, so I hope it's oh. decent, decent. So I'm trying to think. To the most important thing is to sup to surprise. Okay, we could go with that. Okay, that is the. Is it, does it sound strange? It sounds okay. a little strange because you're kind of. Okay. It kind of leaves you wanting more, like surprise. What? But I, I would say actually we would say um, the most important thing is the element. Of uh, okay. That's okay, more okay. how we would say it. Yeah. Um, <sighs> that is the opinion of the table setting artist Katarina Lindeberg. Okay. A table setting need not be fancy with silver and gold. I work a lot, uh, so a lot is steward, a lot with contrasts and unexpected elements. It gives the guests something to, yeah, I mean, talk, converse is okay, but we would just say talk about talk. it. Talk. Okay. <laughs> it works mm -hmm. as an icebreaker. Katarina uses attributes from nature. You don't need the other such as blueberry branches, stones, twigs, feathers, and vegetables. Odd objects give, I would say, unusual or un okay, okay. Un unexpected, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, objects give the table setting a more informal impression. A large effect is also important, according to Katharina. 
So a large effect. We wouldn't really say that. What ex what is it more like? Um, like a uh, awesome. A big, like an impression. Like make a big impression. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would just say it is also important to make a big impression. Yeah. Okay. According to Katarina. Okay. Something that people often forget, comma, is that the party starts before people come to the table. Do not put two torches at the entrance, put 40 torches. <laughs> it is simple yet awesome and creates a wow feeling. Yeah. A common mistake is to put high, uh, I would say Things. tall. Tall. Yeah, yeah tall. Tall. Of course. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just saying things, but there's probably another word that would be more elegant <laughs> to say. Okay, okay. Yeah, tall things or tall um, objects, you could say. Yeah, you could put mm -hmm. objects, maybe. Elements. Tall objects yeah. on, or ornaments, yeah, decorations or something on the table, such as a large bouquet of flowers or a huge um, candelabra. The, those things c cut off, you could say, contact between guests. People have to be able to see and talk to each other. Yellow is a trend this spring. Um, you could say yellow is, it's more like yellow is popular this okay. spring, which uh, suits, and I would put Easter here. Suits Easter. Easter perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. So why not trend? Is that not? Trend. Um, yellow, you, you could use the word trend, but it would, I would change the sentence around a little bit. Um, uh, like I would say something like, it is. Uh, one of the trendy colors this spring is yellow, or something like okay. that. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just be rewording it to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you have another word for wow feeling? Mm, yet yeah, awesome and creates. Uh, no, that's okay. Like an awe, and you could say and. Uh, yeah, because it says creates. You could say and is awe inspiring or something like that, where you go, ah, oh, wow, cool. But that's. That's good. Wow feeling. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. sure. Anybody else ready? Yes, uh, yeah, I'm ready yes. with number two. Okay. Uh, number two. Let's see. Okay, Julissa. Here we are in what it seems to be an important meeting. Maybe it's a conference in which an expert will talk about an important issue. <clears throat> the woman that is dressed very formally is probably the expert that is ready to give her presentation to the audience. She looks very confident and comfortable. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. Uh, here we are in what, and you don't need the it there, you just put what seems to be an important meeting. Maybe it's a conference in which an expert will talk about an important issue. The woman, um, I would just, you don't need the comma there. You could say the woman who is dressed very formally, comma, is probably the expert that is ready to give her presentation to the audience. She looks very confident and comfortable. Okay, good. Have you ever had to give a, a speech, Julissa? Yes, me. Uh, not alone. In, no? in pairs or in groups, yes. Uh -huh. Like in a class or something? Yes. At yeah. the beginning it was very scary, but then <laughs> when, when, you start, when you start talking and, and yeah, you, get the, you start feeling more comfortable. And it depends also on the topic that you are going to talk. Because if yeah. it's something that you like and that you know very well, you are well prepared, then yeah. the words come out and you feel very... Yeah. Very yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, Andre, were you saying that you had given a speech before? Or are you saying yeah. that you're ready to read? <laughs> I, I read to read. Okay, all right. Hold, let me find it. Number four, I think? Yes. Okay. All right, let's hear it. Um... If I had an extra ten thousand uh, dollars, uh, I would travel to the USA again, like in my last vacations. Uh, I would go back to San Diego in California because I love the, the city. I, I can say properly that it, this is this is nice, so nice and enjoyable. Uh, the weather is pretty good. The people are so polite and respectful with the foreigners. And they helped me, uh, helped me a lot when I needed any kind of information about the directions or a specific place. And also, I visited Los Angeles City and Las Vegas in Nevada. Uh, I watched an NBA game between Lakers versus Phoenix Suns. 
I can say that I realized a big dream of my life. Okay, cool. All right, if I had an extra ten thousand dollars, so when we do uh, numbers in uh, the U.S., we use the comma. Ah, yes, it's right. Yeah. So, and um, I travel to the U.S.A. again, like my last uh, vacation. Uh, I'd go back to San Diego, California, because I loved this city. I can say, uh, what did you want to say with the word properly? Because we wouldn't write that there, but I want to know what you meant. Uh, San Diego. No, the word right here, properly. Oops. Where you said, uh, I can say properly. That it I is can so say surely, I mean. Oh, okay. I can say for sure that it is so nice and enjoyable. The weather is pretty good. The people are so polite and respectful with foreigners, and they helped me a lot when I needed any kind of information about, I would just say, directions or a specific place. And I also visited Los Angeles City and Las Vegas in Nevada's NV. Uh, uh, this, this word, I, I yeah. didn't put in this. <laughs> okay. I watched a, an NBA game between the LA Lakers uh, versus, well, let's see. You could say I watched an NBA game, um, and then you just put the semicolon, LA Lakers versus Phoenix Suns. Um, I can say that I realized a big dream of my life. Okay, great. Do you have any plans to come back to the United States? Yes. Yeah? yeah in next year. Uh-huh. To the same place, or where now? Uh, firstly, the same city, but uh, I, I'm thinking to you know San Francisco, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, San Francisco is nice. My brother lives there. Uh, I, I would like to know uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh-huh. Yep. And have you heard of uh, Lombard Street? It's the crookedest street in the world, they say. Yes. <laughs> and the Alcatraz, too. In Alcatraz, yep. Okay, uh, John, Freddie, do you want to read what you wrote for number three? Okay, yep. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Nancy and Melanie had been friends for many years. Last summer, they decided to travel together to Rome. They took this picture during a sunny Saturday very near to Vatican City. In this place, many people use is used to use carriages carriage uh -huh. that, that, that are traditional from the city as a means of transportation. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see all the city and take many pictures. They were going from the St. Peter's Basilica to the Coliseum. After taking the picture, the horse started to run so fast that Lindsay fell down from the carriage. Lindsay suffered no injury and when Melanie went to help her, oh, they yeah. started to laugh a lot. <laughs> We always love about this funny anecdote when I met with them. When I met with them, okay. When I okay. meet. Yeah, when I met, yeah. So, uh, Lindsay and Melanie have been friends for many years. Last summer, they decided to travel together to Rome. They took this picture during a sunny Saturday, very near to Vatican City. Uh, Saturday, comma, very near to Vatican City. It, okay. In this place, comma, Many people used to use carriages um, that okay we don't need that that are traditional um, that are traditional uh, let's see let's see that I would say that were traditionally used in the city as a means of transportation. They wanted to see all the city and take many pictures. They were going from and I would just take the the out from St. Peter's Basilica to the Colosseum. After taking the picture, the horse started to run so fast that Lindsay fell down uh, from the carriage. Uh, Lindsay suffered no injuries. We usually say no injuries. And when Melanie went to help her, they started to laugh a lot. We always laugh about this funny anecdote when I, oh yeah, you could say when I meet with them. Okay, that's fine. Good. <laughs> that's a good Hi, one. Lisa. Okay, yeah, you ready? Hi, who is that? Uh, I am. Oh, Esa, hi. Esa. Uh, could you tell me, please, where is the yeah. worksheet? Yes, the Google document link is in the Google chat. 
Okay, thank you. So if you go over to the Google chat, you can get it. Francesca, are you ready to read? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, how about uh, number one? Okay, just one moment. Okay. Okay. Yesterday night, I went at Paul's party. It was his graduation party, so there were a lot of people partying and drinking all together. One of Paul's friends, Mark, was so drunk that he confused the tractor for his car. He decided to come back home with it, but it was so potted that was impossible for him to drive, and so the tractor fell into the canal and he was stuck in it until the next morning. Okay. Johnny, I'm gonna, uh, John, I'm gonna mute you. There's some. Background. Oh my gosh! What? What, Andre? Uh, background noise. Yeah, I just muted it. Okay, okay. So usually, instead of saying yesterday night, we just say last night. Okay. So last night, I went to Paul's party. It was his graduation party, so there were a lot of people partying and drinking all together. One of Paul's friends, Mark was so drunk that he confused the tractor for his car. He decided to uh, come back, uh, go back home with it, comma, but he was so, uh, we would say, wasted <laughs> okay. that it, it was impossible for him to drive. And so the tractor fell into the canal and he was stuck in it until the next morning. <laughs> Those crazy drunken guys. <laughs> okay, did you also finish uh, number three? Uh, I think yes. Okay, go ahead. You can read that. Okay. In this picture, we can see two girls. There are Maria and Catherine, two buddy buddy friends, that after won a local photo contest, decide to use their money to make an European trip and take a lot of photos. Here in this photo, they are in Spain and they are enjoying a particular trip in a, a horse drawn carriage. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot it. In this picture, we can see two girls. They are Maria and Katrin, two buddy buddy friends. Uh, that after I would say after having won a local okay. photo contest, decided to use their money to make a a European trip. I know it's supposed to be Anne, but it's not. We don't really say that. A European trip okay. and take a lot of photos. Here in this photo, comma, they are in Spain, comma and are enjoying a particular trip in a horse-drawn carriage. Okay. Okay. Have you ever been to Spain, Francesca? Yes, a lot of times. Oh, really? Where yes, do you go? because I love it. Barcelona, or where do you go? Barcelona, Madrid, Malaga, Alicante, oh, and a wow. lot of places, <laughs> yes. So do you speak Spanish, too? Yes, because I went in Madrid for five months uh, mm. for an Erasmus experience, so now oh, cool. I can speak Spanish, yes. Uh-huh, nice. Awesome. I spent a year, well, a school year, about nine months in Spain when I was a, a teenager. A when? when? When I was a teenager, like when I was 15, 16, a long time ago. Yeah, I okay. went to Victoria in the Basque country. Ah, uh, okay. And it's very yeah. difficult to understand them. Yeah. <laughs> well, they span. I could understand the Spanish. I never learned Basque. That's the hard language. Yes, yeah. very, but very I hard. I didn't live uh, with any people who spoke Basque. They all spoke Spanish. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, is anybody else ready to read? We have about 10 minutes left. Uh, yes, I'm ready. Okay, which number? Yes. Number three. Three, okay. All right, go ahead. In this picture, I see two tourists that seem to be having a really great time somewhere in Europe. They are having a ride on a carriage while, while saying hello to the camera. In the back side, there are many other carriages giving rounds to the square. The weather looks warm and a bit sunny. It's a perfect day to go for a walk or a ride on a carriage. Okay, good. In this picture, I would put a comma there. I see two tourists that seem to be having a really great time somewhere in Europe. They're having a ride on a carriage while saying hello to the camera. Um, I would say behind them, you could see, behind them there are many other carriages, um, I would say, oops, driving around the square. The weather looks warm and a bit sunny. It's a perfect day to go for a walk or a ride um, 
in a carriage. Okay? Great. Have you ever been in a horse-drawn carriage before, Julissa? Uh, yes, but not in this type. I've been, I ride ridden a horse before. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been in that kind either. Kind of like the bigger kind. But uh, when I rode a horse, there was a guy yeah. that he, he made the, the horse walk. Mm. So I was not completely alone with the horse. Oh, uh, okay. He was the driver or he was the person yeah. leading the horse or something? Yeah. And it's not easy. I thought it was very easy to ride a, a horse, but no, it, it moves. The horse moves you and you don't have the, the balance. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so easy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Francesca, do you want to uh, read the one about the ten thousand dollars? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, here we are. If I had an extra ten thousand dollars, I would use it to move to Australia with my boyfriend and start a new living experience there. First of all, we would do a huge trip around this land, discovering a lot of interesting places, and then we would looking for a flat where to stay in Sydney and starting working there. Okay. All right, if I had an extra $10,000, comma, I would use it to move to Australia with my boyfriend and start a new living experience there. First of all, comma, we would, m I would say make, we would make a huge trip around uh, this land, comma, discovering a lot of interesting places, um, comma, and then we would, I would put look, and then we would look for a flat, uh, to lit where we could let's see we would look for a flat to I would say live in okay live in Sydney and start working there okay okay is that something uh, you really want to do yes I wish I could do it uh-huh have you ever been to Australia no, no never so why is it so interesting to you what do you like about it in Australia uh-huh because I think for work opportunity Mm. And I hope I, uh, I hope we can find a job and stay there and I yeah. don't know. <laughs> and because I think that is a great country and beautiful country. There uh -huh. is a sea, sun, beaches yeah. and so perfect. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't miss you wouldn't Italy? Miss Italy? Sorry? Sorry? You wouldn't miss you wouldn't Italy too much? <laughs> Oh, I think yes, but uh, I prefer to go abroad. I really like traveling, and uh -huh. so this okay. is what I want to do. Uh huh. Nice. All right. I have never been to Australia, but um, I, well, I've heard really good things. But I had a, a foreign exchange student who lived in my house. She was from New Zealand. Okay. So that's another cool place. Yes. Maria, are you ready to read? We only have about. Uh, six yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, finish up. Ready. Finish up. Uh, Saliva dog helped the police. The the dog the German shepherd dog Cox sniffs on the crime scene to find some spit from the criminal. Uh, for more than <laughs> one year, the police in Karlskrona have successfully used the Saliva dog to secure DNA evidence. Now more dogs are trained to work in other police districts. As of today, the dog has been used to secure evidence, evidences, evidence, evidence, mainly with burglary. It is not uncommon that burglaries <laughs> spit when they break into a house or when leaving the crime scene. They may not think and spit out snuff or chewing gum, says Gunnar Karlsson, head of the dog unit at the police in Karlskrona. The six-year-old Cox is trained to find also small residues of saliva from humans. When a dog finds some saliva, it marks the spot and points with its nose. The police can thereafter secure the evidence by taking it off the ground. The saliva is sent to the Forensic Institute for DNA Analy Analysis. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> Hopefully it will give a hit in the DNA register, which has happened in 30 cases already. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I, that, that was threw me off, but after listening, I understand. Sali so we say saliva, saliva dog helps the police. All right, the German shepherd dog Cox sniffs on the crime scene, scene to find some spit from the criminal. <laughs> Sounds funny. <laughs> um, for more than... 
for more than we usually say a year. So for more than a year, let's see. Okay, just watch this. For more than a year, the police in Corona have successfully used a saliva dog to secure D. Oops. Usually when we write DNA, it's all capitalized. DNA okay. evidence. Um, you can just put like that. Now, comma, more dogs are trained to work in other police districts. As of today, the dog has been used to secure evidence, um, mainly with burglaries. Um, it is not uncommon that a burglar uh, will spit when... I would say he breaks Break. into a house or when leaving the when crime When breaking scene. into a house. You could uh -huh. say that too, yeah. Okay. When breaking into a house or when leaving the crime scene. They may not think and spit out snuff or chewing gum, says Gunnar Carlson. Okay, head of the dog unit at the police. Uh, okay, head of the dog unit, you could say, for the police in Carl's Corona. Okay. The six-year-old mm -hmm. Cox is trained to find all... Small, also small residues of saliva from humans. Okay, hold on. Six-year-old Cox, okay. I would say, has been trained to also find small residues of saliva from humans. When the dog finds some saliva, it make it marks the spot and points with its nose. The police can there, um, after, secure the evidence by taking it off the ground. Um, I would just say then can then mm -hmm. secure the evidence. The saliva is sent to uh, the Forensic Institute for DNA analysis. Um, hopefully it will give a hit in the DNA registrar, register, which has happened in 30 cases already. In such cases, comma, a person can be linked to the crime scene. Mm-hmm. Smart dogs. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I haven't heard of that. Me neither. <laughs> Better not spit. Thieves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more spitting. <laughs> okay, John, did you want to read? Are you still with us? John? Akbe, I can help. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay go ahead. I'm here. My, my story sounds short. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Another person, very, very uh, long uh, That's okay. Story. Everybody does what they can do. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I, pardon. I... I call uh, called my mom. Okay. Hi, hi, mom. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of restaurant for uh, your birthday celebration with your colleague uh, and your your friend and our family? Mm -hmm. I think we select uh, Chinese restaurant with uh, Taiwan foods and uh, uh, Irish bread. For example, uh, different kind of seafood and the river fish. It can be uh, exo. Exotic? Exotics, exotic, uh -huh. but I don't like Chinese food, you know. Uh -huh. Then go to the uh, near near uh, Nil River for salsa dancing night away, <laughs> and we can sitting on the grass for freedom. Uh, each other can uh, secure. Okay, Maybe. all right, good. So. Um, I've heard some background noise. Okay, I would say hi. Um, I called my mom. Hi, mom. What kind of rest? What kind of restaurant? And then I would say, since it's a question, uh, do you want to go to oh, okay. for your birthday celebration with your colleagues, your friends, and our family? And then a question mark. <coughs> and then you're saying, I think. Did she say I think we should select Chinese? Is that her talking or you? John? No. I think I think we uh, should select a Chinese restaurant with Taiwan Taiwanese foods with Irish bread. Taiwanese food. Um, for example, different kinds of seafood and river fish. It can be exotic. But I don't like Chinese food, you know. <laughs> Is that what she said? Then go. Um, then we can go near the Nile River for salsa dancing the night away. <laughs> uh, and then we can sit on 
the grass for, I would say, um, in the fresh air and a squirt, I think water, right? Squirt water no, at okay. each other. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, you guys, our time is up. So I want to just thank everybody for coming to the class today. It was fun Whoa. having you. Good it, story. It's so quickly, the class. I know. Well, it goes by fast because you're working. You know, you're working so yes. hard. And so it goes by really fast. Okay. Okay. All my classes go by too fast, and I always go over. It's kind of a problem. <laughs> yeah. uh, Lisa. Yes, Lisa. Can we pass the, the link? Because yes. Alpha wants. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll do it. Okay. There you go, Alpha. <laughs> you don't okay, have guys. your reading class anymore. Oh, have you quit your reading class? No, no. I just um, I I don't. You know, every day when we when the teachers go to uh, um, choose the times for their classes, sometimes they're not available. So I have to just make them when I can. So I, ah. I think I have another one, but it might be when you're already asleep. I have one later tonight. I'm not sure what it is, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I did a reading class. I think sometimes I've been doing some when you're asleep. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, you have to just check the schedule. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Have thank a good thank day, you. Everybody. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. See you next time. You. See you soon. Yes. Bye. 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 John. In Turkey. Um, yes. Yes, I'm from Turkey. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Uh, Francesca, how are you doing? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. And you? Good. Where Where are you from? I'm from Italy. Italy. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> How's Italy today? Very bad. We've got a <laughs> rainy day. It's rainy day today. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Too, too bad. <laughs> uh, okay, John, Freddy. Hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> and uh, where are you from? Uh, I am in Bogota, in Colombia. Oh, okay. All right. You yep. have your, your neighbors in here too, Maria Jose. Yep. Have you <laughs> met her? <laughs> Julissa, how are you doing today? Hello, Lisa. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good. And how's, how's the weather in uh, Peru? Well, these days it's getting colder. It's oh. uh, fall. It's starting, so soon it will be colder winter. Oh. Uh, now, now it's fine. Not so cold. It's yeah. I feel warm a little here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Maria, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Were you in the Spanish class? Yes. Were <laughs> I you heard, watching? I heard you. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I just kind of had it turned on in the background while I was doing some other things on the computer. But I, I heard your voice. <laughs> la, camisita, la camisita de Lisa es... Uh, Azul. Uh, Azul. Sí, es verdad. <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> oh, okay, wonderful. And Marie Jose, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. And how are you? I'm doing well. Okay, today is hot like always here, but. But you're. Uh, uh, a funny day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm it... from. Well, go ahead. Uh, and I'm from Colombia. Um, hello, everybody. Okay. Hello. And uh, Hi. Tomas. Hi. Hi, Tomas. Your your microphone is probably muted. If you want to check on it. For sure, it's it's on. There hello? you go. Yes, you I can me? hear you now. Good. Okay. So, so my name is Tomas. I'm from Poland. Thomas. All right. Wonderful. And. Uh, Vicent, Vicent. Hi. Yeah. How do you say your name? Is it Vicent? Vicente or? I think your microphone, it might be muted, so turn on your microphone. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Just yeah. to say it out. Yes. How do you say your name? Vicent. Vicent. And where are you from? Yes, I'm from Spain, Alicante in the south. Uh, Alicante, okay. And how's the yeah. weather there today? Yes, it's too windy today. Too yes, windy. it's hot. It's it's hot, but too windy. Mm -hmm. Are you guys getting ready for Easter tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I probably some people here celebrate Easter and some do not. So, 
Let's see, Maria, do you do anything for Easter? Uh, well, yeah, it's a lot of, yeah, many people make large dinners, like, mm -hmm. on Easter, Easter day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Easter day, Saturday. Yeah. Sounds yeah. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Well, yeah. Oh. Marie Jose, do you guys do anything for Easter? Yep. We go to the church uh -huh. and and maybe a, a special a special lunch lunch with the family, I think. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm no more. Yeah. Francesca, do you do anything for Easter? Mm, yes, in Italy, in general, we celebrate Easter, but here in my family, we are not doing nothing special tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Just a simple lunch all together. Yeah. Okay. Andre, how about you? Yes, uh, here in Brazil, we celebrate Easter, and the... Yes, Hi, everybody. This is Lisa, and it's time again for another Verbling class. Um, I am in Washington State in the United States, and for me, it's 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, in this hour, we're going to be doing a writing class. So if you are not familiar yet with how I do uh, the writing classes, then you can stick around and listen to understand how this works. If you have a reservation with your Verbling Premium membership, you can join now. Just uh, click on the little button that says the Get Reservation and you can come into the class now. Hi, Andre. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Good. Hey, I saw the video that you guys made of uh, Hannah's birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I saw you in it. That was awesome. <laughs> yes, the, I think that he, she enjoyed a lot. Oh yeah, I'm sure that was awesome. Yes. <laughs> cool. Well, how long did it take to for you guys to put that together? Ah, uh, we sent a video by by email. Mm, okay. For like... Nor Norbert, and he, oh. he joined the our our videos. Uh huh. He put them all together. How yes. did how did you know it was her birthday? Had you talked uh, about it or something in class or? Uh, yes, I think. Oh, uh, okay. And yeah. the Norbert uh, enjoyed the opportunity. Uh huh. Does he show? Do... They show her. Uh huh. Does he know how to do that stuff pretty well? The video editing stuff, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was neat. Cool. Everybody liked it. All the teachers watched it and stuff. Well, I don't know if everybody watched it, but a lot of people saw yeah. it. So. And now uh, we are famous now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> on Facebook and on YouTube. <laughs> and, uh, YouTube too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yep. Hi there, Tural. How are you? Make sure you uh, check on your microphone. It's probably muted. So um, when you're coming into class, everybody, uh, a lot of times when you come into the Google Hangout, your microphone is automatically muted. That means it's red. If you look up at the top of the right-hand uh, corner, you'll see the microphone and it's red. That means I cannot hear you. So um, before you speak, just make sure that's not red. It has to be gray, and then I'll be able to hear you. Okay? So whoever wants to come in can come in now. All you have to do is click the join class button. I think we might be full actually. So for the people who are in the Google Hangouts, go to your Google chat and I'm posting the link for the document there. Um, all you have to do is uh, click on the left hand, upper left corner of your screen. It says chat. That's the Google chat. So it looks like some people have found it and are opening. I want to make sure everybody um, goes there and just I want to say hi to everybody. Andre, we were already talking a little bit, so haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> so um, I know I do I do classes at very uh, different times, so sometimes it works for some people and sometimes they don't really work for, for other people. I have to fit it into my schedule of my life where I have lots of other things that I'm doing as well. So I just pick pick and choose different times. Okay, uh, John, how are you doing? 
Check your microphone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. And you're calling in from Turkey, right? Nope. I'm from. Uh, I'm John. Yeah, John. <laughs> which John. one? <laughs> oh, which one? Oh, yeah. The one, the one that looks like can, actually. <laughs> John. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah. Um, I just remembered you told me that the C is more like a J, right? Yesterday, some people doesn't eat meat. Oh, yes. Uh huh. To, to respect the day. Yes. And the, my family and I ate outside. Oh, did you eat fish? Yes. <laughs> yeah, good. It's a seafood dish. Uh huh. Does anybody else want to tell us if you're going to do anything for Easter? Lisa or John or John, Freddie? I know. Do Lisa, do you do anything? Well, here we have a long weekend that started just no, on th Thursday. Mm -hmm. From Thursday to Sunday, yeah, it's a long weekend. Some people travel, but well, this time I I just stay at home and, and same as Andre. We don't we can eat meat, just mm -hmm. fish, yeah. and well, visit in the church and whatever. Make uh, eating. <laughs> Yesterday I was preparing uh, a new dessert with my mother. Like oh, cool. yeah. Yeah, the main the main thing that happens, um, well, in America, in the United States, it's obviously the very different for everybody, depending on your religion. If you're Catholic or a Christian, um, if you celebrate Easter, maybe you're going to go to church. Maybe you'll have a, a big like brunch, so halfway between a breakfast and a lunch, or maybe a lunch. And but the most fun is for the kids is the Easter egg hunt. So that's something that most of the kids like to do is maybe color eggs and then the adults hide them and then the kids go around looking for the Easter eggs. So that's pretty fun. Okay, well, you guys ready to do some writing? Looks like you guys all got to the page. Yeah. So let's, uh, for you, those of you who want to get started because you already know what you're doing, then you can go ahead and start writing. And otherwise, I will go over the directions here so that everybody understands. Um, so this is the English writing class. And something about the microphones. Let's make sure that we um, either turn off your microphone